John Anik and Kenny Florian podcast. John Anik and Kenny Florian. I love them. I can't get enough of them. Let's hear that for the next. Big job there from Duffy and Frank Mir is hurt now. Oh, Duffy goes Duffy on oh, call. Frank Mir does it again. Rock em, sock em, robots here. Oh, my goodness. I can't believe there are a couple of absolutely self-involved bull artists. Here are your hosts, John Anik and Kenny Florian. All right, Monday, March 13th, 2023, episode 395 of the Anakin Florian podcast. And for the first time in the nearly eight year history of this show, I made Ken Flo sit and wait for me for 15 minutes before we started the episode. How'd that go? How dare you? I know. How dare you, dude? How dare you? I wait for nobody. No, it's all good, son. You're usually waiting for me. Like, so this kind of like, you know, it's all good. So when we had Kevin Ioli, the famed boxing and MMA writer from Yahoo Sports on episode one or episode three. We intro him, and as you'll recall, the first thing he said, oh, it's great to be on with you guys, but why is it not the Florian and Anik podcast? What did John Anik do to have his name in front of Ken Flo's? And I froze. I was like, we got this whole thing wrong. This guy fought for the belt three times. But no, I just did Teddy Atlas's podcast. We went a little bit long. His energy is just off the charts. So I'm trying to sort of use it as fuel for our podcast today. We've got yeah. two episodes coming up this week, full episodes of the Anakin Florian podcast. On the video side are yours on the DraftKings YouTube channel. Don't forget, clips of this show can still be accessed on our Anakin Florian podcast channel, which is also the home to remember the show with Bilal Muhammad and Jason Anik every Thursday night. Uh, but DraftKings is where you need to be subscribing and Obviously, if you like the video, that will help in terms of the population of your whole YouTube library. On the audio side, hopefully you've noticed that the audio is getting better and better with every passing show. Speaking of which, we're hardwired today, Ken Flo, hardwired into a brand new Deco router. Okay, we have yes. changed out the box, right? I have upgraded my internet plan, an additional tier. It actually wasn't the fastest, so I apologize there. Xfinity <laughs> is coming to the house tomorrow at 8 a.m with a brand new modem and we're passing speed tests at this point in time to the liking of our producer Cody Merrow. So I know my audio hasn't been an issue. The video has been the issue and hopefully this is not frozen or frozen two or frozen three and hopefully we're, <laughs> we're good to go. All right. Cody's saying we're getting there, but it doesn't seem like he's like optimally satisfied. So <laughs> tomorrow, tomorrow will be fixed. I'm, I'm confident. All right. Ray Optimist. Longo coming up in about 15 minutes as he will celebrate the win from Rob Dwalish Willie over Piotr Jan. One other thing I just wanted to mention, Ken Flo. So I came back from Vegas and I, I had like an infected hangnail. And so I'm going to lose the fingernail, which is neither here nor there, but I got like a shot, a numbing agent of some kind, three different shots in my finger. And Ooh. I'm fine with needles. Some people just, yeah. our, our producer, UFC producer, Zach Candido fucking hates needles, right? I'm fine yeah. with needles. She's like, you want me to stick the needle in there and try to relieve? And yes, let's do it, right? So she's sticking a needle in there to numb the finger, hoping that when she cuts it open, she'll get pus, right? Yeah. But instead, every time she cut it open, it was just blood. It still provided relief because I think my fingertip was like filled with blood and maybe some blood underneath right. the nail. But bro. Because the fingers are so small, I I almost passed out. And it wasn't because <laughs> of the shot or seeing my own blood. I think Cody said, oh, is it the sight of your own blood? No. I mean, I'm tough as hell, as the MMA audience knows. But no, I, dude, I've ne that's the worst feeling in the world, like being about oh. to pass out from like a shot of Novocaine or whatever. Ugh. Dude, that's brutal. Well, there's, there's like there's nowhere for that needle to go. It's just like right into your finger, uh, and and those are painful, man. Those, those are painful. Inf in infections are uh, never good. Never. Fun. We're good now, though. I'm on a, a pretty strong antibiotic. A few more days of that, so there will be no drinking in London. But uh, I guess I'm most amazed, and perhaps Doctor Florian can help me out with this. But, dude, six minutes later, I'm behind the wheel of a motor vehicle driving myself yeah. home, and my wife's like, "Oh, what did she say about your finger?" I'm like, "Babe, I." fucking passed out then they're barking all these instructions at me i have no idea what i'm supposed to do with this finger and uh they let me drive home drunk after passing out five minutes later <laughs> so all right all right so uh oh, big week obviously with ufc 286 coming up we'll have a second episode later this week with severe mma sean sheehan and also predictions from ken flow and brian petrie i think six or seven picks for you guys on ufc 286 pfl challenger series you got a few more weeks in orlando is that right 
one more week, man. One more week. Uh, we kind of have like the second chances people uh, that are coming back. And um, and that's it. And then we got a little break, a little respite. And then we're off to Vegas for uh, PFL 1, 2, and 3. Yeah, it seems like you're going to be in Vegas for UFC 287 weekend, right? When we'll be in Miami. Is that right? That April 8th weekend? So. Yes. yes. All right. Exactly. We're yeah. going to try to do uh, some Anakin Florian podcast on location stuff with DraftKings. But uh, Ken Flo, you know, Ken Flo's got a busiest schedule. Busiest fucking schedule in the world. Speaking of which, by the way, Michael Bisping, very apologetic that he couldn't be with us today. His schedule is crazy, right? He's yeah. going to effort to be with us either next Monday or next Wednesday. But rest assured, he has a lot of love for Kenny Florian as he relayed to me over text I message. Yeah, he wants to come on with you. So um, we will make good on that, I can assure you. All right. Speaking of making good, how about may Rob Dwellish Willie making good on the main event showcase 50 to 45 Times three over Piotr Jan. He's your winner by unanimous decision. A record-setting, star-making performance, as DC put it on the broadcast. And no one's ever done this to Piotr Jan. That's for damn sure. What were your thoughts on Marab's big win over the weekend, kid? I've never seen a fighter at an elite level fight other elite fighters and use their conditioning as a weapon like Marab has in the modern era, right? Um, he's a guy that, you know, his... his there's nothing that stands out as far as his striking or, or even his grappling skills, but it's his conditioning and his relentless approach and his timing in this fight that was so phenomenal. I saw improvements in his striking. There's no question about it. Um, but his toughness, his conditioning is just on a different level, man. It, it, it was really impressive to watch, and it was fun to watch. A lot of times, you know, you hear even knocks on guys like Habib Nurmagomedov. Uh, ah, you know, yeah, he's good, but, you know, he kind of wrestles you, doesn't do a whole lot. Here's Marab, who's trying to take you down, and people are loving it. People are loving his fight, and they should. It should be respected. Um, what he was able to do to a fighter like Piotr Jan is just unbelievable. And again, I, I, I tweeted this. If you're a guy who's looking up Piotr's last few fights and you're looking at his record, or if you see that fight against Rob, you're like, who's this guy? He doesn't look like he's that great. It seems like he's on the on the downturn. This is a phenomenal fighter in Piotr Jan, and Marab just takes him completely out of his game. It, it's... It was unbelievable to watch. It was a lot of fun. I'm a little bit disorganized in terms of my thought process on Dwalish Willie. I don't even know where to begin. I have a lot of notes. One of them is just this overall happiness in combat. And we certainly talk on the heels of John Jones's big win. I did think John Jones had a little bit more tension in his body than is normally the case when he was getting ready to fight Seattle Gone. But Kenny, I know that this flies in the face a little bit in terms of guys like you and George St. Pierre, in terms of just your thoughtful nature, maybe getting in the way of just total happiness on fight night. Uh, but yeah. dude, this dude just loves it, man. From the walkout, even at the beginning of round five, like you can't wipe the smile off his face. Loves it. He would have done another five rounds that night against some other fighter. I mean, the guys, he, he's so impressive to watch. He really loves what he's doing. Uh, and you know, again, that, that gift of having that pacing, uh, to be able to do that consistently uh, is, is something else. Someone asked me on Twitter, you know, well, what do you think, uh, Piotr Jan could have done? He wasn't creating a whole lot of offense. And I said, well, you know, uh, footwork would have helped for him to be a better grappler, uh, would have helped. But how the hell do you create offense when you have someone who's shooting in on you 49 times? Dude. 49 times? Are you kidding me? A record. It's insane. And I'm going to get you all the numbers on Marab Dwalish Willie. But in terms of weaponizing the conditioning, you know, another note that I took, and Marab's a friend of the show, obviously long goes on every show, but I had written down like Cheeto going to make him pay for some of these mistakes. And I don't even know, Kenny, if I can tell you what I perceive as just a novice MMA fan, because I really am not much more than that, right? I'm not even okay. sure, though, that I can tell you what I perceive to be Marab's mistakes, but it just seems like at times he leaves himself open with this constant pursuit of offense. And I mm -hmm. feel like a longer athlete like Cheeto with so many different fight ending weapons and instincts. I don't know. I did write that down. So what kind of stylist or elite bantamweight is going to be able to solve him because he is literally dusting and dominating like elite elite bantamweights like it's nothing. 
Well, I actually, I, I think you pretty much nailed it. I, I do think leaf length uh, would absolutely help someone. You know, Cheeto, um, you know, uh, Sean O'Malley, guys like that with that kind of length who can move well and keep you on the outside is going to be crucial. You need long-range weapons. You don't want Marab in your face. You need to get um, some kind of distance established those long range weapons need to let Marab know that he can't just charge forward. So you're going to have to be good at countering, good at establishing either that lead leg or that jab to keep Marab on the outside. Uh, otherwise, you're in for a long night. You, you will suffer and your soul will be robbed from you in the process. You know, that's the kind of Marab uh, that you're going to face. So I, I agree 100%. With 11 takedowns landed, <clears throat> Marab Dwalish Willie, the first fighter in UFC history to land 10 or more takedowns in a fight on four different occasions that of course impressive in its own right but his 49 takedown attempts a new single fight ufc record previously held by kane velasquez 33 against junior dos santos at ufc 155 dwellis willie also ties the longest active ufc win streak in the bantamweight division eight consecutive wins it's a nine fight ufc win streak overall and uh just absolutely incredible his ability to pressure Somebody like Piotr Jan to the point where Jan was rendered so defensive. And by the way, Piotr Jan has issued a statement on social media. I think there were some suboptimal things that happened during fight week. And, uh, you know, I don't think there's any overstating how challenging the travel can be for some of these guys from Europe and Australia and Asia coming to Las Vegas to fight against somebody who trains there locally. But Kenny, like Piotr Jan, he just was rendered reactive and defensive because, ever, like, dude, like the, the memes out there, like, dude, can you imagine looking at fucking Marab Dwalish Willie at the beginning of the next round? It's like. Yeah, it, 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 it really does kill your soul. When, when you're exhausted, you're doing everything possible to just survive. And you see the guy across you, just like, like he just took a, stro a stroll in the park. You're like, really? I mean, it's like you're working probably harder than me and you're fine and I'm exhausted. It really is. He has truly weaponized his conditioning to uh, insane levels. And um, I don't know. He's going to give a lot of people problems. The other thing, I, problems, I think the other thing is this, is that Marab really did make improvements with his striking. And Jan was so concerned at certain points with his takedowns that he was getting lit up on the feet, yeah. either whether it was leg kicks or a nice combination with his hands. And, and uh, you know, Marab's hitting hard enough and his striking has gotten to a level now where you can't sleep on that either. So uh, Marab continues to impress. Uh, it, it's, it's really fun to watch him and see him succeed. One of the nicest guys in the sport, and uh, Mr. Longo has to be a very happy man right now. And we're going to get to Longo in a couple of minutes, and I am going to bring Dana White's comments on Marab Dwalish Willie potentially fighting Aljamain Sterling or not fighting him, I guess I should say. But I am going to wait and give those quotes to Ray mm. so that we can get his reaction. But Marab Dwalish Willie is firmly in the mix at 135 pounds, and I've said this before about Dana White. I do believe at his core, he wants a meritocracy. He wants the most deserving guy to get the championship opportunity. And I do think this Henry Cejudo re-injection into the mix was a little bit of a tricky navigation for the promotion because Sean O'Malley beat Piotr Jan, who was the number one contender, to earn the title fight, even though that was a close fight. And then Cejudo sort of came back into the mix. So as I tweeted today, Kenny, I know Marab's not going to fight Aljo, but you have Henry Cejudo, who is now the number one contender, who has leapfrogged the real number one contender, Sean O'Malley. You have Marlon Chito Vera, who's won four in the row. And because he's just a fucking good egg, he's going to fight Corey Sandhagen when he probably doesn't have to. And then you have Marab Dwalish Willie, who's Aljo's teammate, who seemingly to me has earned a championship opportunity. Like, what, are you going to give Marab Dominic Cruz in a main event? I mean, go look at the top 10 right now. And you laugh, right? But I actually believe that that fight is possible if Marab wants to fight again before he fights for the title. Because you have a chance to add the name of the consensus greatest bandweight of all time to your ledger in a fight that you'll probably be a 4-1 to favorite to win. But I don't know what you do, man. I don't know what you do. Interesting. And listen, I, I think that's a better fight for Dominic Cruz than a lot of people realize. However, these are all good problems for a promotion to have. I mean, this 135 pound division, John, is insane. It's ridiculous how much talent is there. Uh, you know, you can go all the way to the top 10. All of those guys are absolute killers. You look at their skills top to bottom. 
Um, it's it's really impressive. It, it is absolutely one of the best divisions in all of mixed martial arts. There's no question about that. Um, and you know, uh, I guess it gives the the UFC a lot of different options, but it but it is very complicated when you talk about timing, matchups. You know, who beat who? Uh, there's just a whole lot going on. There. And if Cejudo is able to wrest the belt away from Aljamain Sterling, how long would Henry Cejudo be sticking around? Corey Sanhagen, obviously, is going to factor prominently in this mix. He has a main event against Cheeto in 12 days, and one of those guys effectively is going to be eliminated from this conversation. I also wouldn't be surprised to see Dominic Cruz fight Piotr Jan. Now, the appeal of the Jan fight has lost some shine for Dom, you can be sure, with the yeah. three successive losses now to Aljamain Sterling, Sean O'Malley, and Mayrob Dwellish Willie. But I don't know, man. I really do believe that uh, it's a very short list of guys that Marab could potentially fight right now on the heels of just a, a domination of Piotr Jan that I'm not sure too many people expected. I got to think Danny Rubin and Piotr Jan are having some, uh, having some nightmares about Raymond Longo, but we're going to table that because Longo is <laughs> going to join us here in about 60 seconds. First, though, are you ready for UFC 286 or what? The welterweight championship going to be decided in this historic third matchup between Leon Edwards and Kamar Usman this weekend. Who do you think is going to come out on top? Well, you can place your bets right now on DraftKings Sportsbook, the official sports betting partner of UFC. And right now, new customers can bet just $5 to get $200 in bonus bets instantly. Plus, all users can take the MMA action to the next level with DraftKings' same game parlays. You download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use code AFPOD. Bet $5 on UFC 286 to get $200 in bonus bets instantly. That's code AF pod one word only at DraftKings Sportsbook 21 plus in most eligible states, but age varies by jurisdiction, eligibility, and deposit restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details and state specific responsible gambling resources. Gambling problem? Call 1 800 Gambler in New York, 8778 Hope NY, or text Hope NY. That is 467 369. Bonus issued as bonus bets terms at sportsbook.draftkings.com slash MMA terms. All right, a celebratory edition of the Ray Longo Minute. Let's get to it. It's now time for the Ray Longo Minute. I want you to punch a hole in this fucking chest. That's what I want. The Ray Longo Minute. John Anik and Kenny Florian podcast. Amongst my I people. mean, I don't even know where Come to on. begin other than congratulations. And what, wait, please. I'm so no, excited. Said, don't don't start with my hair because, you know, I just want you to know, Heidi Dean said my hair looks good. That's all uh, that matters <laughs> to me. If Heidi <laughs> says it looks good, I don't care what you two guys say. So I'm so happy for you, and it's oh, just amazing you, how many Mondays we've had like this since we launched this podcast with you in 2015. And Marab Dwalishwili is a guy that you have believed in to such an extent. You know, humbly, you loved this matchup for him. Kenny picked him at plus 185. You've yeah, cornered Kenny. Aljamain Sterling to two wins over Piotr Jan, but to now corner Marab to a win over Piotr Jan and a domination like that, a performance against Piotr Jan that we've never seen anybody do that to him before. I don't know, man. You got to be on cloud nine with your Bantamweight contender. No, listen, John. I mean, I'm on cloud nine for a variety of reasons, but uh, you know what I mean? But it's, you know, to, I, I, you know, I, like I was uh, to watch this kid grow and to see him lose, come back, make the adjustments always have the right frame of mind. Like I was telling, I was telling them, you know, more people see the tip of the iceberg. Now they don't see what's below the water, all the stuff you had to do to get there. You know what I mean? And, Oh man, I've never seen a guy like this, man. Look at all the, like, again, all the, even his first two losses in the UFC, he was down two in the UFC. Yeah. Not that I thought he lost either of them, but he was down two. never let it get to him. Always made the adjustments. Uh, really, We've been talking about his cardio. Man, did he weaponize his cardio? Unbelievable in this fight. And if I had to pick a perfect scenario for the fight, it was Saturday night. That was it. I, there was no glitches because after the first round, Kenny, I knew that he was going to win the fight 95%. I just didn't know. You know, we, we knew that he was dangerous off the clinch. He had some spins and he could always catch you in some weird positions. So it wasn't that we were unaware of that, but he off balanced him so bad. Like he, that guy, did, I saw it. He didn't know what was coming. And Marab kicked, he punched, he take down, he elbowed. He basically did everything and you didn't know when it was coming. 
and he's got balls. So he's not only does he weaponize his cardio, he's fearless. You have to kill him to get him out of there. You know, he got hit with some decent shots. It didn't, he didn't even budge. Right. I, I want to know where the hell you put the gas pump. Is it super <laughs> unleaded? Or where, is it like right. jet fuel? What the hell? What the hell do you put in this kid? I, I mean, you you tweeted something. I know I responded to you. He 100% had another two rounds in him, a hun- like 100%. You know, he, think of that. It's a Crazy. grueling fight. You look across the octa. Normally, I'll go for my guys. I go, look how hard he's breathing. You look across. This guy's not even sitting down. He's he's smiling. Well, you know, it's one thing to say for someone to be like, ah, he had another two rounds for him. But it's like, look at the way Marab fought. That would kill most human beings having that kind of pace. And he could have done – it looked like he could have done another fight. Like, that, oh, no. that is crazy that he has that level of conditioning. Um, but uh, again, you know, what did you think of Marab's general progression? Because again, not only, not only was his conditioning awesome, which I think we all expected, but he looked better everywhere. Uh, Ray, he, he looked yes. real sharp. Yes. Uh, well, a couple of things. First of all, like you talk to people at the gym, I could call them in here. They've seen this guy do that exact same thing to a million people in the gym. It's nothing new. He's never, uh, you know, <laughs> I don't think he's ever sparred three rounds. It's always six rounds maybe 10, you know what I mean? Like he just, and that's with new people. That's not with obviously with the same buddy because nobody could keep up with him. But uh, yeah, his progression was good. Look, I want to give a shout out to John Wood too. He did a, John did a great job. What I like about John, believe yeah. who's that? Oh no, <laughs> no way. <laughs> so listen, I'm sorry. This Were is, you about to give me a shout out? Yeah. <laughs> no. what I, what Were you I, about to give me a shout God, out? Dude. Poor John Wood. Oh, like, what a fight. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, John, please, John. Do not, do not enable. What a special, special night for me. <laughs> this is all so, my doing. I needed yeah, to John, celebrate yes. with Matt Sarah today. I, I needed Matt hey, Sarah in my life today. John, I might never talk to you again. I swear uh, to Kenny, God. Kenny, but, John. But, oh, man. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> Kenny, I miss you. What's up, Matty? I tell you, Kenny, oh, we do go way back, though. No, it is <laughs> yes. crazy when you think about it. like even John saying we've been in this position a lot. Look, I'm blessed. I really feel blessed to be. And, and you know, it all started without without this guy in the corner over here. Matt, <laughs> Sarah, I'm not here today. I mean, it really started way back when we were all together in those locker rooms. Kenny, it's it's been such a great ride and just meeting all the people and developing friendships and watching the fighters grow and accomplish their dreams i i can't say enough like it kind of never was about the fighting to me man it was always about building a culture where people get better and better and better you know with or without me you know what i mean and uh you know and to be successful after the fighting careers i always say what matt i don't know what this guy for he had a hundred street fights he would fight for free right. which he did fight for free back then so <laughs> to watch yes. him where he's at now in life with a beautiful family and a great business and just loving every day of his life to me, that's where it was all about that. I, I you know, it's, it, I'm not the usual coach. Trust me. I don't know. I can't explain it, but I talk to people and they just don't get it. Like, you know, we could break down fights easy. Fighting is, I, I look at it as it's not the hardest thing in the world to look at and see who's going to win or what you have to do to win. It, to me, it's easy. But to build a culture where everybody stays together, I mean, you know, look, marriages fall apart, friendships fall apart. I know this guy, 35 years, trust me, yeah. I really wanted it to fall apart after the first five <laughs> years, but it didn't. I tried, but he just hung in there. But uh, no, but you know, to, to have a friendship for 30 years or 30 plus years in this business, look how many people come and go. It's crazy. Right. So right. Matt, Matt's a sucker for pain, obviously. Yeah. Uh, Matt, uh, did, you know, when you were fighting, did you ever envision yourself as being, um, you know, of course you were a jiu-jitsu coach. Did you envision yourself as this guy who would bring up uh, a whole team of mixed martial arts fighters to the highest level? No. I, I, did I envision myself at what point? Like this I, you know, when you were fight when you were fighting, do you say, you know, that's going to be my next move? I'm going to kind of go into coaching and kind of bring guys up. No, you know, I always, I, you know, we came up very similar, Kenny, with with, you know, the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu boom. You know what I mean? It was like, you know, I my dream was just to one day be able to run a school and teach Jiu Jitsu, and my earliest dream is like maybe. I could have like a challenge match just before the first UFC. And then when I, you know, then with the whole, when I became, when I started fighting, the whole thing with the coaching happened very organically 
with, with, with Longo. Like it didn't, it, that wasn't a dream of mine. I'm not a, like I'll coach my guys in jujitsu as far as I like making, I like, in, I'm, I'm not, not, I'm not even a big coach going to jujitsu tournaments. I'll say more of, I like making people be able to, um, defend themselves and not get bullied type of thing. That's my, I, like, I like putting anybody in my position that with me, that in that thing in Vegas with that drunk, if any one of my students, they with me for six months, they're able to take care of that. Yeah. They're not getting embarrassed in front of their family. So I'm more of that route. I'm not even interested in bringing up the next champion. That's not my thing. That's Ray's thing. But Ray and me did it organically with guys from our schools that we liked. I don't, that's how it really yeah. happened. And that's how it is now. I'm not, and I'm not, I don't just, Sometimes in 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 in, uh, in AC, if we have guys fighting and there's another guy, I'll jump in the corner if Flango like vouches for the guy, you right. know, like uh, Pompos. I like Pompos yeah, and yeah, guys yeah. like that. Yeah, I guys. don't know him as well as some of the other guys. I'm starting to, but like Longo, uh, like then I'll that'll happen organically too. But like the guys we have, we're not like me and Longo were talking about this and. Whatever you want to, is this Lawrence? Uh, whatever. No, you're good. Whatever gets cavalry fucking around. But Longo, we were talking about some shit. And fuck it. I don't, we have enough friends anyway. <laughs> but we're talking about guys like, we're talking about guys like, like the shit that happened with like Greg Jackson and like they had Rashad Evans on. And, yeah. And I'm not attacking anybody. Everybody's got their own, and him and Wink and them guys. And next thing you know, they had Rashad Evans and then John Jones, the next big thing. Let's bring him in. And Rashad's almost like, what the fuck? And, and you know, and then the same kind of thing that happened with them with George St. Pierre. They had Diego. But hey, no, this George is the next big thing. We're not like, I'm not judging them. Maybe I am. But anyway, no, I'm only fucking around. But my thing is, me and Longo aren't fucking like right. that. Yeah, I, don't, I, would. I don't give a fuck about bringing it. We're not, we didn't, we didn't go to Georgia to fucking hunt down Marab. That happened totally organically. Thank God. Yeah. If you guys know his story, thank God the way he, yeah. Thank God he met in, at Longo's in, in the city that time, and he was he was linked up with the wrong people. But it's just it all happens organic. Yeah. Now we yeah. love Marab. Yeah, like, I, I think. Love yeah, Marab. and I tell you what, even what Matt's saying, like even like these guys, like they've been together for years. Like when we say it's a like a friend, the team, the friendships, the bonds that are built. It's not a guy coming into the gym and six months later you're saying he's my friend. Right? You think John Jones ever gave a shit about Rashad Evans? Really? And Rashad's a great guy. I love him. But you think he ever cared? You know, with friend. No, how could you be friends? Would you know each other a year or two? Right. But the you way know, these guys, are, athletes, these guys are together ten years. The way your athletes, Matt and Ray, swear by you guys is truly one of the most special things in all the mixed martial arts, right? Whether it's Matt Arroyo spending time in Tampa, but you know that he always wants you guys prominently involved, right? Or it's Marab Dwalish really doing an entire training camp in Vegas, and yet the collective value of you two individuals on fight night is such. That he makes yeah. sure that you're there. Um, it it speaks to your you know that, your collective brilliance. Yeah. It? that's the martial arts component, much. not the fight component. Without you know what I mean? More, you know? Listen, Marab's Marab is loyalty, character, integrity. He's not going to have that stripped from. He comes from humble beginnings. You could end this shit tomorrow. From people will never understand this, which is mind boggling to me. He'll be happy. He, I don't. I think that guy go back to doing construction tomorrow and be happy. Yeah. You can't change that. People, it's not always about the money. We've seen people with millions that are just miserable and they can't get out of their own way. This is different, man. And I tell you, that's the culture I want to be a part of. Not a, a you know, like, a, you know, eating your, your other people to get ahead. Everybody's squashing somebody to move forward. It, I, I don't like it. I never did like it. Me and Matt never had that. And that was uh, – it, let me just let me give a shout out to John Wood too because he's a, <laughs> he's a great guy. Oh, again, I thought he was joking. I, going I, back to the John Wood shout out, Maddie. I thought he was joking. He's going back yeah, for no, more listen, right now. You know what it is, John? I told oh. John, John, I go, John, you're a special person if you could even deal with this group because this is a tight knit group. So it goes to show you how nice John is, and I think where John did a great job is he didn't try to change morale. You know, he wasn't bad and spinning. Take the he took what he had and he he enhanced it, and I think he understood it. Look. Marab, I could call anybody into the gym right now, and they'll tell you they've seen Marab do that every time he's in the gym. That's nothing new. So Marab's going to do what Marab's going to do. That's why I have no problem, like, almost wherever he trains, as long as you don't ruin what he has, which I think John did a great job at just, you know, because I was down there a couple of weeks ago. I watched, you know, a couple of things. So he did a fantastic job. I want to shout out John Wood and his mother, who – who really calmed me down before the fight. So she's a sweetheart. They got a good thing going. And like, again, if he could deal with us, 
you're more than welcome to jump on board. Yeah. That is not easy to do. Matty, go ahead. Yeah. Hey, Longo, let me get 30 <laughs> seconds of your fucking minute. Yeah, my How fucking podcast. All I want, all I want is 20 seconds of your goddamn minute. Oh, you fucking yapping. Shit. I'm only kidding. Guys, oh. I'm kidding. Listen, guys, he breaks your balls. You bring me in to break yeah, in. Exactly. No, I'm kidding. No, my thing is, I was going to bring up John Wood also. Because I'll tell you right now, Longo's way more, I'm going to say, laid back as far as that third mic in the in the corner. Like, 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 if we got, like, if it's me and him, and uh, how about this? And I love Matt Arroyo, but if he starts bringing up a rhythm uh-huh. in the fucking corner, I'm fucking, I'm, I'm hitting that right. motherfucker. <laughs> I'm like, but uh, I like Matt Arroyo, but if I'm with fucking Marab and we're like, dude, keep the pressure. Hey, Marab, six times seven, eight, fuck, what the fuck are All you right. talking yeah. about? Yeah. Hey, really quick, <laughs> eight times eight, eight times eight, <laughs> six times seven, what it? Really? Yes. Hold on, everybody. Yes. Hold on. <laughs> Break out the chalkboard. See, but see, see what I'm Fuck saying? Fuck off with that Guys, shit. you get what I'm saying? John Fuck Wood's, off with John Wood's a special person because he could have exposed himself to this type of shit. He, did, <laughs> dude, he got in John there. He did Wood, a great job. John Wood. Dude, I love when people do stupid shit. And people go, oh, he's doing that because that brings him back oh, yeah. to the fucking third eye yeah. in the middle of his head. And oh, really? How about he's in a fucking fist fight, guys? Yeah, that's it. it comes- that's it. How about this? I'm in the cage, so I don't got to do fucking arithmetic at all. That's the, I mean, that's it right there. That's fucking brilliant, right? Oh, like, fucking Kenny, I'm here, Kenny, so I don't have to do math. Do fucking, I would have stayed in school. <laughs> I'm only kidding. Matt Arroyo, he knows we have a sense of humor. I will oh say, though, God. sometimes for me as a commentator, I'm guilty of being like, oh, that's... That's a good little mind trick. When, well, everybody, that yeah. that's what happens. Everybody yeah. does that, though. Everybody wants the new thing, and <laughs> yeah. this is going to do. they know what they do, Longo? Yeah. Then they go to the fucking treadmill with a snorkel on. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> They're the same motherfuckers that oh, are doing yeah. that shit. So Matt yeah, Marab yeah. put the snorkel on. I can tell you that right now. UFC. You go to get Marab a snorkel, he'll stuff it up your ass. I, I'm not even joking. <laughs> Hey, if you're just on the <laughs> audio side right now, that is the voice of UFC Hall of Famer, Matt Serra. And I do have to ask you, Matty, and again, I really appreciate you hopping on today to uh, enhance the whole show. But these two gentlemen, Ray Longo and Kenny Florian, have basically said on the show today, they've never seen anyone like Marab Dwalishwili. You've been there every step of the way. Dana White looking for a fight. What? Yes. Have you ever seen anything like him? Because the three of us really don't have any point of comparison. No, you know what I really like about this fight when I I just watched it back, um, and you see the uh, the comment you hear the commentary and everything is uh now what we it, that's nothing new for us. I mean, we knew he could do that. He could do that fucking ten rounds, literally. I mean, we I rem- like I mean we've seen him do it. Mongo's seen him do it. I mean, and John Wood's seen him do it. It's not it's not anything out of the ordinary for us. But now when you hear DC. Say, all right, now he's keeping that pressure for three rounds. Now we're in the championship rounds. He's not stopping. Right. There's no watch the fifth round, watch the first round. Tell me if there's anything yeah. different. Yeah. No, it's there's insane. anything. It's he's getting fucking dude, in the last round, right. he's like, now now I'm gonna stand up with him. I'm like, oh <laughs> shit, man. Like, he, like Marab, calm down. Like, he's just so it's great. Dude, he is just so on point. And and, and like and like me and Longo were talking about earlier is um what people don't realize is People don't go for a lot of shots because it's taxing. But you know what else is taxing? Fighting off those to- those shots. Peter Jan was doing a great job. Look at who he's taking away the single leg, taking away the single leg, taking away the double, taking away. Dude, but that's coming at, that's, do that for 38 times. I mean, it's, it's fucking, so it's like, they both got the same energy bar. Marab's isn't fucking changing. It's not getting any lower. And the other guy, over time, over th- normally in the past when we see PD on fight, if he'll give away a round. It's like fuck, man. He doesn't look worried between right, rounds. Right. He's just he'll give away two rounds. It's like, hey, dude, what's going on? And next thing you know, oh shit, he's land. Oh, he's land. He's dude. We knew. Longo will tell you. We knew. John Wood. Everybody in the corner. And the third round was the telling tale. Is something going to change here? Did he? Did he fucking download enough fucking data? <laughs> right. <laughs> Is he, He's downloading the data. Listen, the Russian fucking. But uh, (laughs) listen, something went wrong with that fucking data because the dude, you know, the thing is with Marab, you'll watch it and you'll know exactly. Marab's funny. You'll even be like, ah, they're watching. Oh, this ain't that great. The striking's this. My takedowns are that. Dude, pressure is a whole weapon in itself. And he has that in the arsenal. You know what I mean? The pressure. And it's not. 
unless you put him out, you know what I mean? If he's not stopping, so way. it's really, really the only bad. Way. Yeah, and I'm, I'm going to tell you, Kenny, I knew, Kenny and John, I knew after the first round, like, again, he had 95% he was going to win that fight. The only thing could be a fluke because, man, the way he was biting on those fakes, Kenny, he didn't know what was coming. I yeah. knew, like, I, and I knew Marab could keep it up. All he had to do was stay focused. He's got great, great fo. He focused for 25 minutes straight. I mean, he didn't. He didn't let up at all. And again, he off balanced him so much. You know, it was almost like the more you do, the less he does type of deal. And I don't care if he we we didn't even give a shit if he got the takedowns. But when he was going for him, guess what? PDI wasn't doing anything. He took he could never set his feet to get off those power shots. Then he started swinging and missing big. Marab could see that shit coming a mile away. Just a beautiful job for even like young athletes young mma guys watching you know coming up like the way the way he the way he fought is the way he trains that's what you want yeah. from people because some guys train great then they get in there they might have performance anxiety they don't do what you see him do in the gym this guy did it, if I'm, again my perfect case scenario was that fight that he just kept going and off balancing him and doing what he was doing and that's what he did and it was to me it was a championship fight. I that, I had the yeah. same emotions, everything, five rounds. Emotionally, it was a championship fight for me. And uh, he's in a great spot. And, you know, even the thing with him and Aljo, man, like, you know, we would talk, me and Matt would talk about that too. They they make each other better. They're, they're, you're not going to break that. They're not going to break on this. You know what I mean? And nobody's offering Marab a title shot. Why are we even talking about that? Well, he's not going to get a shot before O'Malley. Why is he even – being bothered with that shit. There's so many things that could happen. We can talk about that for sure. And I want to be yeah. respectful of Matt's time, but real quick on this fight, because I'm getting the sentiment from both of you. Yeah. It was a masterclass yet. You both sort of knew that he could do that, thought he would do that, but then in an equal part, you're also blown away, right? It's like you yeah. knew he could do that, right? Matt, you thought he was going to do that, and yet we're all still yeah. totally fucking blown away that he could take that showcase spot against a guy in Piotr Jan that everybody anointed as like the greatest bantamweight of all time. Yeah. And to do that to him over 25 minutes, bro, Crazy. like I'm still shaking. Yeah, yeah, Two John, I got to tell you something. I'm, I'm getting, I'm developing something that's not good in the corner. I'm, I'm starting to sit there in awe of the guys that I'm around, <laughs> like, when Aljo was, even though they could say Dillashaw was straight, I was sitting there going, I, I just can't believe what he's doing to him. Like, this isn't, and that's the same thing in this fight. I thought there would be more resistance where he might have to come back from some adversity. Or something. And I start sitting there going, holy fucking shit, this kid is fucking off the charts. I'm with, John, I'm still blown away by what I saw. And anybody that's not. Don't even talk to me, man, because this was no. this is not an easy thing to do against a guy like Pia Pia yeah. It just isn't. No, I mean, I think everybody knows what they're dealing with. The hardest fight in the division, obviously, besides Aljo, I, I believe was Jose Aldo because of his takedown defense. And, you know, he spends no time on his back unless he's getting put there right by punches by Max Holloway. And uh, he's shown in the past is he's he dealt he deals really well with guys looking to put him down. So that fight and we and also Jan made the fight also yes. where we were talking about that yes. where Jose Aldo oh man he's not doing nothing he's just right. holding me up against the cage. Well, you're not doing nothing trying to get away. You're not doing right. shit. What are you? Right, right. He's not doing anything. You're doing less. See that was Peter Jan. Yeah, yeah. Peter Jan was just running out of fucking that, steam. That was getting, the difference. He was running out yeah. of steam. Marab was just out fighting yeah, him. Yeah, they and, they blamed. Marab for that fight, yeah. but if if Aldo would have fought back like PD Young was trying to win, the same shit would have happened. It would yeah, have been, yeah. but it looked similar. Al it was Jan, Al it was Aldo that didn't make that fight. Honestly, I'm telling you, this yeah. Jan never stopped trying, and that's why it was a better fight because well, Marab's not Aldo going anywhere. Aldo knew if he tried to match that energy, he would have been exhausted. Because exactly. we've seen Aldo get tired. So he was being efficient, yes. but in being efficient, he wasn't winning the fight. 100%, so. Kenny. Yeah. And, and yeah. I think, like, again, some of these things I look at, they're just, they're clear to me. Like, and I know I hear people talk, you know, sometimes, you know, you hear people break down a fight and because they, they're from a different part of the country. You start thinking, well, that guy sounds like he knows what he's talking yeah. about. You know, like, you, you get, you know, it's what, what it's fucking fighting. Yeah. It's it's not that it's not rocket science. It really isn't. 
You know what I mean? So, so I, I know it has already been a busy Monday for Matt. Sarah taped his podcast. You were probably on the mats at six o'clock this morning. So let me get you out of here on this. And yeah. maybe you don't even care about the immediate future for my Rob Dwalish Willie, but you both know he hasn't been able to compete as often as he would like, because when you get to this point of the division, right, it's only big fights. So do you think that it's going to be like a, a Sanhagen type fight, you know, a Dominic Cruz type fight, even though the ranking doesn't align. Like, what are you going to do with Marab, um, who really has earned a title fight at this point based upon what we saw Saturday night? Well, I'm not going to listen. I believe Marab's up for anything. Like, he's this type of guy where, but I'm not. I'm not his manager. I'm his friend. Yeah. I mean, I'm coach when needed. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, but uh. You know, whatever he chooses, I'll, I'll be by his side, myself and Longo. And, uh, you know, I just think that he's already won. Like yeah. Longo said, he's won in life. Oh. And, and another thing that got me really emotional, especially when I seen it on air, is the, the amount of – you hear DC go, yo, did they hand out these Georgian flags? Like, there was so many the, – the support for him. Because you got to see – because when it's, it's, it's a guy you know, and he's the type of guy – that you want to get that kind of love. Like, cause, cause he's the best type of guy. He's just the best. He's one of the best people I know. So for him to get, oh, and I know back home, it's like ridiculous. Oh. Remember what Giga, uh, Giga was telling us, um, Longo, he's like, this is the biggest fight oh, yeah. in the history of his fucking country. Oh, yeah. no, like no, he was no. like, no, it's wow. big, man. I mean, it's so big for him. Yeah. In that way, like I'm telling you right now, the guy, guy they're building a statue of that guy. Yeah, yeah, I, I, mean, over there. I, I look, I stressed this to Marab the whole week I was there. It's like, Marab, this isn't personal, it's business, man, and we're in the business of fucking winning. I don't you can't <laughs> not against a guy like this. You don't want to get crazy. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think it's, it's it, 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 the, it, the emotions were I've never seen him like this. i that's the first time I've seen him act the way he was acting. So uh, to me, and oh. Matt knows that too, the pressure when Giga was telling him, I want to say, I love Giga Chikazi too, man. And what a great influence he's been on Marab too. Also, I mean, the Georgians, just nice people. And we had, a, we had a, uh, you know, the team dinner, Giga stopped by to say hello. And we, at the end, somebody picked up the tab. It was Giga Chikazi. Oh, wow. What a, wow. I mean, it was not a, it was not a small tab, man. So that's what I'm saying. These guys have wow. a different view on life. They come from humble beginnings for them to pick up a tab like that. Even if the guy had no money, it right. doesn't, it just, it's, a, it's so refreshing. I can't, that's what I, it's refreshing to me to see people acting like fucking people and not like yeah. animals. I, it, it just is, I don't know. Speaking of animals, that was some, you got that cheesecake, didn't you? <laughs> oh I'm, yeah, cheesecake. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's, that's, why, the so, that's uh, why the bill was so. That's why the bill was so. Hey, Maddie, expensive. really appreciate you hopping on today, guys. Family. Man, thanks for having me. You're the best, man. Longo, thanks for sharing the minute oh, with me. Oh yeah, it's been a pleasure. <laughs> this was fun. All right, guys. Hey, you take, take care, care man. Good seeing you, Kenny. Great Later, man. There he is. Later, Longo. The UFC take Hall of Famer, Matt Sarah, interrupting. The Ray Longo minute today by design. So hopefully that, that was, was okay awesome. with you, Raymond. Can you, can you guys warn me next time? <laughs> well, that's <laughs> the whole point. It's, you know? like, it's like literally like you're driving at 20 miles an hour and a guy hits you going 180. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Holy crap. So as that was all going on, I spilled yes. my water all over my broadcast table here. Uh, chargers soaking wet, phone soaking wet, pens everywhere. There's water underneath my desk cover. So oh, this is going to be uh, a little bit hairy here over the last five minutes. But Ray, yes, you got pretty animated when you're talking about the title picture, right? And first, yeah. let me just acknowledge that in this UFC men's bantamweight division that has never been stronger nor deeper, 75 Ooh. deep, you got the number one and number two guys in the world right now. Love it. Crazy. But here's the quote Crazy. from Dana White, and it's probably going to upset you to whatever degree. And I do think you're right. Like, it's not like he's fighting for the title in the next six months. Yeah. So perhaps this will solve itself. But here's the quote from Dana White. You know, back in the early days, the camps were so small, you didn't have a lot of options. So we had a lot of these guys saying, oh, he's my friend. He's my friend. You can still be friends and want what your friend has. It'd be a really bad idea for Marab to go down that path. Does Marab want a shot at the title or would he rather have people under him jump over him and have him to take on all these different top guys when he's not even getting the title shot when he's next for it? That is a personal decision that he needs to make. If that's what he wants to do, I can tell you how that story ends. It's not a good ending to that story, but he's a big boy. He can figure that out on his own. So. What is your expectation as to what happens for Marab, say, over the course of the rest of 2023? 
Well, 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 let me look. I, Please. First of all, you got to remember too, John. I promote fights, and I understand exactly what Dana is talking about because we we go through it every week. This camp don't want to fight that camp. I know this guy. I get it. I get it. But this is a little different. And is he promising? Is, can Marab have the title shot over Sean O'Malley? That's number one. Right. Does, no, does he get right. the winner of Cejudo and Aljo? Right. No. You want right. to guarantee him that? You want to do that? Because he'll take it. And then Aljo probably will win that fight. He's going to win that fight. And he'll move up. Aljo was telling Marab to call for the belt in the ring. I bet. When we were in the octagon. I'm not joking. Aljo has matured into one of the finest people I know. I, yep. I love this guy. I love what he's done with his life. I love the way he breaks stuff down. I like He's just a good guy. It's not. A, trust me, it's not a problem. They want to make it a problem. It's not going to be a problem. I think everything's going to play out exactly the way it's going to play out. Nobody's jumping over him. Give him a, give him a, you want to give him a guaranteed title fight? What, what are we talking title fight for? O'Malley's got the next shot. Against All whoever right, so, it's going to be. No, so and I largely I agree with you, but I'm a fan. Yes. And there's nobody for Marab to fight at this point. Based upon his body of work, he has earned a shot at the title. That's yes. why we're having the conversation. So, hey, yes. if you yeah, guys yeah. like and Cheeto Vera, candidly, if he beats Corey Sanhagen, he's not taking another four, fight before he fights for the belt. And yeah. he would have five straight wins. And there's a there, it's you got four number one contenders right now. But yes. it sounds to me like. Well, we got to wait till what happens in May. Yeah, I that's, think that's, that's a first yeah, really, so. yeah, that's that's the key is let's wait till after May 6th and uh, we'll see how everything plays out. But that's why I say that to talk about it before that is just conjecture that. I don't know. How does it play out? I mean, I don't know. Rafael Sunsa had like fucking what? 12 wins in a row. You ever get a title shot? Yeah. Where was his title shot? Like people just dude, it's bullshit. Everybody knows what they want to do. They, they, they have the UFC has the next year or two already planned out in advance, as far as I'm concerned. You know, there's been a million guys, but like Tony Ferguson, a lot of guys got skipped over. They had yeah. great wins. Why, no, why you're are right. you focusing on Marab now? Well, because no, it makes I felt for a like, good story. I felt you know, like no, Cheeto. No, no, I'm just saying, no, I know. no, I know, but yeah. I felt like Cheeto didn't need this Corey Sandhagen fight. Marlon Cheeto Vera, that four yeah. fight winning streak on paper right now, that's worthy of a title shot, but it kind of is what it is. Yeah, but why isn't he getting the title shot? He beat Sean O'Malley. No, I agree. He's well, got good because wins. he's a, because you know what? He's a promoter's dream, and he's willing to headline against Corey Sanhagen and bet on himself. Exactly. You know, but I don't think it's a crazy thing for the promoter Dana White to no. try to lay the foundation to potentially get teammates to fight each other. I mean, we all have different agendas, you know. But yeah, I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, I want, think there's so many other there's there's too many moving parts to even look at it right now right. That's the way I, I, I agree and you and i yeah. are aligned and perhaps i'm putting the yeah. cart before the horse as well all right yeah. i'm gonna get you out of here on this i have a tweet from ufc fighter zach paunga i was cornering curtis blades when marab fought marlon but and we shared a locker room the last three minutes of his warm-up was just ray longo screaming machine over and over again it gets me hyped just thinking about it and <laughs> you know, Henry Hoof likes to say, keep it simple, stupid. And yeah. <laughs> I just think your ability to motivate athletes and to say something as simple as machine a hundred times in that moment. I don't know. I just thought it was cool to see him acknowledge you because um, uh, that's, you got that's, a way to fire up not just Marab, but us and everybody else. So just uh, a lot of long go love out there. Well, I want to say thank you very much to Zach for that. But and that's definitely, yeah, I'm going to say it's accurate. Normally we do it on the bus ride over, Kenny. I don't remember doing it in the locker room, but there's, there, I'm sure we we reenacted it in the locker room because normally on the bus ride over, we just go nuts with that. It's been like a, you know, like a, not a superstition, but like a habit that we do. And uh, I don't know. Look, the guy, that's why I say it's it's different. It's not It's not a team of 200 guys. You know, there's maybe 10, 20 guys, which even 20 is too much, you know what yeah. I mean? But there's a there's a core, there's a nucleus of people that that they know that everybody has their back, no matter win, lose, or draw. It has to mean something. It's the way I've been doing it for years. I'm not stopping it. You know, I might be more of a cheerleader now and even more hands-on, but I know what I'm looking at. I'm, I love, I get a lot of help from a lot of people. I could I could give you a list and start thanking them you know, right now, but it's just, uh, like the UFC again, security guard helping you down the stairs, for example. No, he never helped. I go down off of Aljo's back. If you watch I mean, uh, the security guy, but I think he wants to help me. <laughs> I, I know they want to touch greatness. Yeah, they just want to they fucking want to reach out and touch but, it. 
But look, if I got to be a cheerleader, I'm going to be a cheerleader. It's just it's, it's about getting the W. And like, again, if I, I, I could never do what, what Zach says, like what he's saying, I could never do if I wasn't totally emotionally invested in these guys. That's the, the thing. And how could you do that when you have 30 people coming from all over the place for a week or two and I'm jumping in here? I had this conversation even with John Wood. I don't know how you do it in Vegas. Like, yeah. I could never do that. I got to get it. Take, what does it take? You think it takes three three months to attach yourself to a guy, you know, learn about his family and you know, meet people that he knows. It takes a long time. Right. And that 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 bond, the stronger you get that bond, look, I don't know how this thing's going to go down, you know, like in the end, but, you know, we're in the history books forever. Oh, there's and no that, doubt. That, you know what I'm saying? Like, and you know, I just wouldn't trade it for anything. I, I can't, like, we are, we got, we got a 5,500 square foot place. 5,500 yeah. square foot. Right. Guys got 30,000 square foot places with billionaire money behind right. them. Right. You know how satisfying that is to beat people oh, I'm sure. from those gyms? You know, oh, I'm sure. I was a, I mean, a lot of money behind Piotr Jan, a lot of these other athletes at these big gyms, you know. Ken has you know, got summer houses bigger than 5,500 square feet. <laughs> but no, Kenny's, it is. Kenny's closet might be 5,500 square feet. Yeah, it's closet. <laughs> I mean, think about it. He's oh, got man. a lot of but, uh, uh, Kenny, geese. I thank you for picking Marab. I listened to your breakdown. Uh, Petrie, I listen, you know, Brian's breakdown – I agree with him. I he wasn't he wasn't off. I mean, he definitely wasn't off. I he picked the wrong guy, obviously. But it was there was a lot of concerning things going into this fight. Again, my perfect scenario was exactly what happened Saturday night. But I thought he'd get touched up a little more myself. You know what I mean? But he did such a great job at off balancing that. It's just that he could never plan his feet to get a, a solid shot. You know, crazy. It was unbelievable. Well, enjoy it. We appreciate your time. We will talk to you next Monday to recap UFC 286, but I will get you out of here on this. Kamara Usman, Leon Edwards, Justin Gaethje, Rafael Fazeev, huge pay-per-view in London, England. Of those four athletes, Usman, Edwards, Fazeev, Gaethje, who are you most confident in to get a win in London, England this weekend? Wow. I got to tell you, those are really good matchups. You know, I like... I, I. I love everybody. I don't know Fazeev, but uh, who am I most confident to get it done? Well, what do you that's think about like, the main event? Isn't that a great – that's our Anakin Florian poll question for this week. We'll reveal the I results mean, later on Thursday. But who do you feel most confident in on the main event? What do you think about Leon and Kamara? Um, I, I know – I just found out uh, Leon's an underdog. I'm going with Leon. I really think uh, – you know, he t- it took him too much time to pull the trigger. I think he'll. I think he's just going to have a better fight. I yeah. really do. I, I think he he understands. I, I think he was a little flat in that first fight, and that's what it cost him up until like the fifth round. Uh, I think you know injuries got to be catching up with Usman. He's. I don't know. It's it's hard to come back. I think sometimes from that, and I think I'm going to go. I'm taking. A, I'm going to go with Edwards on that. All right, we'll see if you're right next Monday, brother. But enjoy that win, man, and uh, yeah. all good things for Marab for Aljo, and uh, congratulations, my brother. Be well. Man, it was great right, enjoy, man. Yeah, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. I'll talk to you next week. You're the fucking man. Don't forget it. <laughs> I love every second of I'm it. I'm serious. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Fucking man right there. The Ray Longo yeah, Minute every man. week here on the Anakin Florian Podcast. Ken Flo, before we bounce on out of here, Roman Delidze, Ilya Topuria, May Rob Dwalish Willie, Giga Chikadze. I'm sure I'm forgetting a high-profile Georgian. But of those four, Giga Chikadze, Roman Delidze, who fights Marvin Vittori this weekend, Ilya Topuria, May Rob Dwalish Willie. I know you love yourself some Ilya Topuria, but which of those four guys is most likely to break through and win a world title for Georgia? You think it's Topuria at Featherweight? You think it's Marab at Bantamweight? Delidze, man. I'm telling you, man, if anybody has a chance to put away Marvin Vittori, maybe it's fucking that guy, you know? Gosh, that's a great question. First of all, yeah, it, it's amazing uh, the level of guys that they're producing uh, out of Georgia. Dude. I mean, you, you see it where they're where they're at right now. It's going to be between Marab and, and Ilya Topuria, I think. Yeah. Right, uh, Ilya also is what he's fighting at one fifty five. His next one, he keeps going up and down. It's tough to say. I, I don't think at fifty five, but at forty five, yeah. he's got an absolute great shot. But I think Marab's got to be. 
probably leading the pack right now, right? Yeah. And in terms of Giga Chikadze paying for that dinner, right? I think it's a lesson for all of us, right? You pay 2500 bucks for a dinner and that maybe stretches you a little bit if you're Giga Chikadze, right? But Big time. those type of things more often than not come back around, you know, when you yeah. establish goodwill with people. I don't know if it's karma, whatever it is, but uh, I have a funny feeling that that money is going to come back around for Giga Chikadze and uh, his Knockout Cancer Foundation and everything else. All right. That's going to do it for this episode. Rest assured, though, we'll have plenty more on this fight night and also UFC 286 coming up later this week. Sean Sheehan from Severe MMA will join us. And also Brian Petrie will have his selections, as will Ken Flo uh, for UFC 286. We do have one more sleep. Designs for the UK available now at millions.co and at FlorianPodcast.com for your other merchandise needs to support this podcast. Kenny Florian Martial Arts.com as well as Ken Flo's personal website. And <clears throat> also don't forget to subscribe to the DraftKings YouTube channel and uh, kindly like our videos. It really helps us out a whole lot. Appreciate our executive producer, Cody Merrill, putting it all together. Production assistant, Will Berger. Thank you to Ray Longo and Matt Sarah, of course. With that, for Kenny Florian, I'm John Anik. Thanking y'all for listening, for watching. We will talk to you in a few short days. Until then, be safe. You'll live.